Welcome, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so the five people here, the answer, good morning to you. <laughs> Welcome, if you can find a seat. I know we're a bit crowded, Layla, but uh, you're just in there. All right, there you go. Oh, it's camera. You can make me look like Tom Cruise, a lot of soft lighting. Fantastic. So I'm Rob Brown. I've already had a bit of jib from my photograph, but it doesn't look anything like what's in your brochure. But uh, I am definitely me. I can testify to that. And uh, I want to kick off. We've got a big day today. You've invested a lot in today. Put aside the money that you're not earning by being here today. Because no one gets paid to network. No one gets paid to come to events like this. We get paid on the results of events like this. Is that fair? We get paid on the results of our networking. So you're taking a day out of the office where you're not getting paid. You're also investing a day of your time. That's massive. Your time's really valuable. You won't get this back. And Caroline and Chris and the whole organizers, be really careful not to put too many seminars on today. Brett's going to be talking to us later. He's got a great talk on, on communication and, and really connecting with people and raising your game that way personally. Mark Sachs is going to be coming in later and doing some great social media stuff. There's, there's few people better than Mark on that stuff. And I'm going to share with you this stuff. How to really make these connections and relationships count. Because if I were to ask you, how do you grow your business? How do you get your business? 99% of the people in the room would say three things. Word of mouth, networking, referrals. Which is great. It's people stuff. But nobody's here being taught how to network. No, it's not part of a university curriculum. It's not part of a professional qualification. It's not really part of on-the-job training. So that whole networking and working in a room thing, we're trying our best. We're copying a little bit about what other people do, and then we're trying to bring in our own strengths and skills, but it's tough. Welcome. You're late. We brought a note. <laughs> I'll be checking those notes later. You've not missed anything. We've just been talking about our most embarrassing sexual experiences. I think we've all shared ours, haven't we? Yeah, yeah we've all shared ours. There's just you five left. <laughs> we've got one hour. So, I'm, listen, I'm down to do an hour, but I'm not going to do an hour. I want to get you out there as quickly as possible so you can apply this stuff. Because you're not going to make any business happen sat here on your backside listening to me. There are two things that are really bad for networking. One is a speaker. And the other is a sit-down meal, because you just sat next to two stiffs, aren't you? Two really boring people, and you can't get much done. So, we're going to minimise this time. I'm going to share some great stuff with you, uh, introduce a little bit of my story, so that you can relate to it. And I never used to be a great networker, and I'll show you how that happened and how I got really good. Just to tell you that this stuff's coachable. You can get better at this stuff. If you can teach yourself it, raise your game, you can start to make things happen. And here's a, a little secret for you. You don't need to do too much to be in the top 5% of networkers in the world. Because the baseline, the average, is so low. So that's hopeful. Just to check we are in the right room. This is the gynecology conference. We all... I just want you to turn somebody close to you, and if you sat on your own, you've defeated the whole object of networking. It's about turning strangers into friends. But can you just turn to someone close to you and say, uh, I'm looking forward to this, it sounds good so far. Will you do that for me? Yeah. Even if you're lying. <laughs> Welcome. You've not missed anything. All we've shared so far is how to make a million pounds in three minutes. I'm sure someone will tell you that story later. You're inching forward, aren't you? I can see you've come off the back row, so you're getting closer. You'll be sat here in about seven minutes. So I'm going to whisk through some great stuff for you in half an hour and, and get you talking a little bit, but it's not so interactive. You can smile at me, that's great, love that. You can laugh at all my jokes at the right times. We can do that. And I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, so think about those. But really, your job for the next... 30, 40 minutes is to say, what can I do to apply this stuff to make me better? Welcome. Thank you. Can we give a round of applause, please? <laughs> sure enough. <laughs> Fantastic. So we've got a little, a little affirmation of you being here, a little confirmation of you being the right kind of people I was speaking to, because you want to be better at 9 o'clock tomorrow than you were at 9 o'clock today. You people are looking to improve. You know that there's things you can learn to make you better, and when you get better, your world gets better. To do that, though, you've got to have some education, get some skills. So let's just check 
what kind of a vibe we've got in the room, what's your attitude to the challenges that you're facing. So if it's true, I want you to give me a thumbs up, and if it's a false, I want you to give me a thumbs down. Here's your first one. Business is easier this time than last year. True or false? What do you think? You can be honest. Okay, we got our first. Stuart, give me one of those. Let's try this one. My prospects are easier to reach or sell to than this time last year. True or false? Yeah, it's quite hard, isn't it, to reach through people. There's a lot of noise out there. What about this one? I love my job. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I don't see any thumbs down on that one. I'm working less hours than this time last year. It's false, isn't it? We're all working hard. We're all working hard. I'm more skillful than this time last year. Do you feel more equipped? Yeah. Brian Tracy it was that said, he didn't tell me, but he said, he said, don't pray for less problems, pray for more skills. Because if there's less problems, it's easier for everyone. 2014 is better than 2013, true or false? about this one. Women are better networkers than men. <laughs> Women are actually better networkers than men. Here's the deal with women networkers. We could do a whole talk on women and men. Women network for the relationship. Men network for the sale. Women network for the rapport and the, and the connection. Men network for the outcome and the result. <coughs> so whilst women are actually better networkers in terms of a skill set, men get more out of networking. Not fair, that's the way it is, but we're going to even the game today. So we've got a new world. If you were doing business 10 years ago, you could be average and make money. You think back to 10 years ago, the world was great, everyone was making money, everyone was borrowing, lost some money on big credit card debts because we knew we could pay it back. These days, if you are average, you will be out of business. Because the recession has dealt with all the dross and all the average stuff out there. And now the people that are left in this game are the people that have got something about them. This is the new world. Everyone is good enough these days. But being good enough is not necessarily being profitable enough. And I have a lovely phrase. It's good gets you in the game, but great gets you on the podium. You can't be average these days and be in the game. You've got to be good. There are no bad accountants. There are no bad web designers. There are no bad bankers these days. Everyone's got to be good. But good only gets you in the game. If you want to win, if you want to be at the top, then you've got to be great. You've got to be better than good. This is the new world. People are looking to do business with the best people they can. The new world is, is not about... Sales, it's about relationships. This is one of my favorite phrases. Your richest resources are in your richest relationships. Why are you here? You're here because you want more business. You want to raise your profile. It's about partnerships. It's about connection. It's about alliances. It's about joint ventures. It's about collaboration. This is the new world. LinkedIn is the largest professional business directory in the world. Two people join it every second in the UK alone. It's changed the whole networking landscape. The old world is you join an old gentleman's club or play a bit of golf on the weekend and that was your networking. I'm doing a piece of research right now on the networking scene in the East Midlands. And I'm mapping out the landscape and seeing who's doing what and where. I was just chatting to Rachel about it from Derby County. And I've started looking at the networking places around my home within a 20 mile radius of me in Nottingham. And I'm at 72 so far. That's networking groups, clubs, gatherings, business related within a 20 mile radius of my postcode. By the time I've done the East Midlands, Northamptonshire, Leicestershire, Lincolnshire, Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire, we're going to be at 500 to 1,000. You could network breakfast, lunch and dinner every day of the week <coughs> if you wanted to. Do you know where the networking capital of the UK is? You know what town has more networking events per capita than any other place in the UK? Milton Keynes. How about that, Milton Keynes? Anyway, so who am I? Well, there's lots of Roberts in the world. That's the one you've got today. And besides, uh, some of those are dead. Some of those don't even exist. Some of them are a lot better looking. I come from Nottingham. Well, I'm Yorkshireman originally, but that's where I live. 
And uh, if you're international, it's there. If you're an alien, that's where I live. Come and network with me. <laughs> welcome, welcome. We've saved the best bits till now, so we can start. That's my wife, but only because this woman won't return my calls. <laughs> And that's my children, uh, so I'm basically a glorified cab driver. Five things I love, love music, I love sport, games, play with the kids, and chocolate. Any chocolate lovers in? Come on. <laughs> I'll be going around those stands later, filling my pockets and stuffing my mouth. Allergic to grapefruit, can't whistle. <laughs> can't. Tried so off. <laughs> I cannot. I'm human. My story is that in 2000, think back to what you were doing in the year 2000. That's what I was doing. I was working in a factory. It was horrible, it was smelly, it was dirty, it was hard work, it was long hours, I was unappreciated. In fact, I was a secondary school maths teacher. And I was teaching kids how to pass tests. So my production line was producing a lot of these. Loved my job, but I wanted to get out. I felt like I was not being used enough with all my talent. So I started to take a master's part-time at the university in the evenings. And I'm looking for something else. And a lady came to sell me private medical insurance from Bupa. Have you heard of Bupa? Great company. And I ended up working for them. I quit my job. And, and I went from this job where I'm earning two, two and a half grand every month. And I know exactly what I'm doing 10 o'clock every Tuesday morning. To this job where if I don't sell you something, my wife and I don't eat. Newly married at this time. And the deal was that Booper gave us 75% of our leads, and I had to generate 25% of my own business. And I said to my boss, how can I generate business? And she said, go out networking. So I said, what's networking? And she said, networking's great. You meet some nice people, you drink some nice drinks, you eat some nice food. She said, it's like partying without the dancing. <laughs> so I got my business card. You know when you get a pack of business cards, you think, oh, I've arrived. This is amazing. <laughs> I'm a professional now, I've got a card. And I went out networking, I chased everything I could. Here's a card, here's a card. Give us a card, give us a card. I had no idea what I was doing, absolutely clueless. But I was going for it. And newly married at the time, so I didn't see much of my life, and I didn't realise how much networking I was doing until I came in one evening, and she stood there with a bottle of wine and a big bar of chocolate. And I said, darling, what are we celebrating? Rob, it's been two years since your first networking event. Two years. Whoosh. Now there was a look on her face as if to say, that, that's not it, I'm not done yet. There was an awkward question coming up. Two years it was, and, and the question was this. If you can find a seat, we're a bit full. That wasn't the question. How much networking, how much money has all this networking brought you? Awkward question. You know, women ask the awkward questions, fellas. Does my bum look big in this? And you know it looks enormous. <laughs> but you can't say it, can you? Uh, what's the one I had recently? Uh, would you marry anyone else if I died? <laughs> Where'd you go with that? <laughs> I said, why, are you planning anything? What do you know? Will you do this magazine quiz with me? See, you just know it's going to end in tears. So she asked me this, how much money have you made from all this now? I can end. Do you know what? I was stumped. I didn't know. But the subtext was because I had not seen you for two years. So I thought, I'm going to find out. Clueless is not an excuse. She's always telling me that. So I did a little bit of track recording and what have I done? And it turns out that in two years I've been to 126 events. I'd spent 284 hours of pressing the flesh, shaking hands, swapping cards. I'd spent £4,385 on breakfast, lunches, dinners. And I collected 987 business cards. So here's a question for you all. How much business, how much money do you think I generated in all of that time? It's a really round number. <laughs> nothing. nothing. Felt like I was busy, but it was really nothing. I said to Amanda, I can't believe it, I've collected 987 business cards. She said, don't count your conversations, make your conversations count. How annoying, the wife's right again. That would be really embarrassing if it was my phone, wouldn't it? <laughs> so, I had a big decision to make. Do I go back to teaching or do I strike forward and get good at this? So I thought, I'm going to think a little bit differently. I'm going to become really good at networking. I didn't know what that meant, 
but I started to watch what people were doing. I read some books, I looked at some people, I got some coaching, and in the space of 13 months, I multiplied my income by a factor of 15. So I was converting a little bit of, before you think in 15 times, nothing is nothing. I was converting a little bit of the leads that Bupa were giving me. It was eight to 9,000 pounds. And then the next year went up to 150 grand. Wow, I got good at this. I got so good that people said to me, teach me what you're doing. Teach me how you're networking. Show me those secrets. And since 2003, I've been showing people how to make money from networking and their relationships. So now, I meet some interesting people. I don't know how political you are, but some people are less interested than others. <laughs> and I run the Global Networking Council, so I, I'm talking to people all the time about what's working on networking, how are you making money from it. I run the Networking Giants radio show, so I interview some of these experts. I write these great books on networking, and, and I got this book as well, How to Build Your Reputation, because I was always fascinated by why some people get chosen and some don't. Have you ever had that situation where somebody not as good as you is doing a job that you should have been doing? They won a client that you should have won. Has that ever happened? Or is that just me? It's not fair, is it? I love LinkedIn. I've got 16,000 connections on LinkedIn. It's a great network. It's another way of doing it. You can network in a dark room with an internet connection and never shake hands with anyone these days. I've done business with people across the world that I've never met. So you can do this. And I went with some great companies and getting the news a little bit. But listen, that's enough. Let's get on with five steps to building a great network. And by the way, if you, um, they're the five steps. If you want to copy these slides, PDF copy of the slides so you're not writing loads of stuff down. And I'll share with you one of my little uh, reports as well. And I'm actually, we're recording this talk. So if you want a, a recording of the talk just to play it back on your, on your phone or something like that, then all you need to do is pop on LinkedIn, do me a recommendation. I said, you won't want stuff if you're not feeling it's been good enough. So connect to me on LinkedIn, I can introduce you to my network, do me a recommendation. And please, if you're going to do that, don't say, I saw Robbie, it was really great, because my mum can do that for me. Just put how it really helped you. So that might be one of your actions for today, and I'll share those goodies. So let's go through these five steps. One by one. First is contribution. So before you go anywhere or do anything, you've got to say, right, why am I worth talking to? Why am I valuable? Why am I worthy of being in someone's network? What is it about me that adds value to people's lives? And how does this manifest itself, contribution? Well, here we want a message. We want that answer to the what do you do question. And it's really got to be three things. The first thing your message has got to be is distinctive. It's got to be a little bit different. If you sound the same as everyone else, you'll just blend in. It's bland. If you sound the same as your competition, I'll go to whoever's the cheapest. So you've got to be a little bit distinctive. You've also got to be pass onable. Let's go to that word, pass onable. I love that word, pass onable. That's what the P stands for in DPC. Let's go back. Pass onable. If you tell me what you do, can I share that with somebody two minutes later when you've gone? Your elevator pitch, your answer to the what do you do question, your proposition, your USP. Can I share it with somebody? Can I deliver it when you're not there? Because if it's not pass onable, your message dies with me. So how do you introduce yourself and talk about yourself and put your marketing literature out there in a way that it's pass onable? It can be repeated. It can be memorable. And the final thing it's got to be is consistent. It's got to say the same thing on your business card as it does on your website. And the same thing should come out of your mouth. Because consistency creates repetition. And repetition creates memorability. You get memorable if you're consistent. People probably won't buy from you after hearing about you once. But if they hear a consistent message two, three, four times, do you see how you start to, to create a groove in someone's life? You start to appear on the radar because you've got a consistent message. So what kills you is saying we do this, we do this, oh this month we're doing this, and this month we've got this special on, and, and now we're doing this, and we changed careers and now we're doing this, and now we're moving into this, and it dilutes your message. So it's gotta be consistent, pass onable, distinctive. Your message is also gotta be worthy and valuable. So one of the things that makes your message worthy is relevance. 
You ever come across someone networking and they say what they're doing, they're just not on your radar at all. There's no connection. You don't need them in their life. It's not a worthy or valuable message to you because you're moving in different ways. Your world is not their world and there's no area of connection and that's totally fine. That happens quite a lot. But with the people that you do count with, you've got to be relevant. You've got to be worthy and valuable. There are a few things that make you valuable. One is what's in your head, knowing stuff. If you've got particular knowledge, that makes you valuable. Skills makes you valuable. If you can do a particular thing really well, if you've got expertise in something, if you know how to do something, that makes you valuable. Another thing that makes you valuable is your influence. What's your reach? Who's looking at what you do? Who's, who's valuing your opinion? If you've got a big Twitter following or a big clout score or a, a, a big network, well, network's another thing that makes you valuable. Networking is the quantity. Influence is the quality. Having a big network is valuable. Having a community or people that you can influence when you do something, they pay attention, that's valuable too. What else is valuable? Passion. Passion's really contagious. People buy passion. People buy someone that's enthusiastic about what they do. People buy vision as well. Having a vision, having a goal, having an objective, that makes you valuable. Because people love associating with people that they know where they're going. They know what they're getting. People buy certainty. People don't buy ditherance. People don't buy vagueness. You've got to be sure of yourself. So all of this stuff makes you valuable. Your client base makes you valuable. The <coughs> results you bring about in your clients makes you valuable. So think about what it is that makes you worthy and valuable. This is all about your contribution. It's no good going into a networking event down there thinking I'm going to create some more business opportunities because it's going to fall down the moment you open your mouth. You're going to get your dominoes in a row and get all this stuff grounded. Last thing that makes you valuable is having specific goals. What do you want from today? What do you want from your network in general? What are your objectives? What kind of people do you want to talk to? So I'm going to come on to goals in a minute. But key word here is this pitch. The perfect pitch, got to be pass on the Your elevator pitch is asked in 98% of conversations with a stranger. You're going to get asked what you do. And you've got one chance to get that right. Unless they've got amnesia, they're not going to ask you again. Also, this is another opportunity. 84% of people will ask you how's business? How's it going? How are you? Social or business conversation. So this is another opportunity to give you elevator pitch. So instead of saying business is great, business is good, which closes a door incidentally, because if you say to me, how's business going, Rob? And I say, fantastic, really busy. You're now thinking, this guy is not open for business. He's busy enough without me. I was going to give him a referral, but he's clearly got lots going on. And I don't know if my referral will get the love and care and attention I want them to get. So business is great, closes a door. Equally, you don't want to say, well, business is lousy at the moment. It's really, really bad. I'm two weeks away from burning down the house and claiming the insurance money. <laughs> we don't want that answer either. It's your opportunity to create something special. Your business is interesting right now. Just finished a really interesting project with a client where we're doing this, and now there's room in the diary for a little bit more. Is the power of something like that? Business is great. I got a referral just yesterday from one of my banking clients, and they introduced me to a law firm, and now we're doing this with them. But you're telling people about the kind of things you do. Stories are the most pass onable thing you can deliver. You know, we remember jokes, you know, we remember movies, we remember books. Stories are really pass onable. People have handed down stories for generations. Next step, so you've got your contribution now. You know what you're about. You know what you're delivering. You know where you add value. Now you've got to say, right, who do I want to meet? What's the calibration? What have I got already? So you're answering these three questions. What have you got? In other words, where is your network strong? Where, uh, what do I need? Where are the gaps? What kind of people do I want to meet? Let me give you some thoughts on your target market. We're trying to answer this question here. What kind of people are companies benefit most from what you're selling. Let's just think about your target market for a moment. See, let's say I were to become a salesperson for you for three days. 
I'm going to give you three days of my life. I mentioned earlier I've got 16,000 connections on LinkedIn, 70,000 followers on Twitter. I'm going to go all out for you. Three days. The first thing I want to know is, who do you want to meet? Who do you want? There's my network. I can't go to all of them because not all of them are relevant. So here's one way of looking at your target market, your, your niche. There are 69 official cities in the UK. Where are you doing business? Are you doing it locally, regionally, nationally, internationally? These are the big cities. I don't see Derby in there, but Nottingham just scrapes in. Sheffield's close enough. Burton's not in there. Utoxeter isn't in there. So do you have to spread your wings a little bit? These are big cities, a lot of people, a lot of competition. But where are you looking to be? I'm in, you can be in 50 LinkedIn groups. I'm in 53 actually, because they allow subgroups. And 37 of them are regional East Midlands related networks. Now a lot of people are in the same groups, but just recently, after spending loads of years traveling the world, I want to make my business quite East Midlands centric. I've got two young daughters, 12 and 10. I know I want to be around them for the next <coughs> five, six years because it's quite critical. So I'm saying, how can I bring my business more home? So I'm building my network more and more locally and regionally. I don't want to really be national. I don't want to schlep down to London and do a talk. But I'm being definite on my target market. 4.7 million UK registered companies. People that say to me, I do business with anyone that has a website, it's not enough. You've got to pick a lane. It's only 6.5 thousand of them have 250 plus employees and we have this idea that we want big corporate accounts. Think about what you're saying. If you want introductions to people in my network, give me a flavour for what kind of segment you're looking in. Then I've got a better idea on helping you. So now you've, you've calibrated your network. You know where the gaps are. You know what kind of people you need. And these are not just prospects. You also want in your calibration people that can introduce you to lots of prospects. How many of you find that the people you want to do business with don't network? Do you get that bit? The people that you really want to meet, you don't find them at networking events. It's a problem, isn't it? So you've got to go through the people you meet at the networking events and access their networks. Now we're into campaign. So how are you going to reach out to these people? How are you going to get on their radars? We can be inbound or outbound. If you know anything about marketing, inbound is where you put something out there and you hope people will come to you. So you write a blog or you do a social media update and you hope someone will pick up the phone or reach out to you. Great stuff. For leadership. Creating a body of work, writing articles, speaking, you're hoping people will come to you. Outbound is picking up the phone or going out networking or running a PR campaign or doing some advertising. You're putting it out there and, and drawing people in. So it doesn't matter what it is, but you need to reach them somehow. Reputation and network. So reputation is who knows you. Network is who you know. Both of them are great for bringing in business. Your network is always smaller than your reputation. Your network is who you know, your reputation is who knows you. The bigger you build your network, the bigger will be your reputation. Reputation is great because people will pick up the phone to you that you've never even met. It's fantastic. But get your profile out there. You start to create a campaign. Now, how am I going to know and be known by the right people? It's no good being fantastic. By the way, can I just ask, is anyone here really lousy at what they do? Anyone really lousy? What are you all looking at me for? <laughs> Cost one. We're brilliant. But it's no good being a really well kept secret. It's like, it's like having a market stall and sticking it in the desert. You could be brilliant, but nobody's going to buy it, nobody's going to see you. So get your campaign right. And finally, have specific strategies. So there are six separate ways to network. You could, go to, you could go to a weekly business event, a weekly business breakfast, something like that. You could do a monthly event, like some of the chamber events. You could do an annual one, like a trade show, or an exhibition, or a big conference. You could do social networking, which is playing golf, hanging out with people at the gym, picking up your kids from school. That's his social networking. You could do the online stuff. 
the social media stuff, the LinkedIn stuff, or you could run your own events, bring people to you. Now you've got to make a connection. Now you've got to shake their hand. Now you've got to reach out to them. So there's a really simple formula that we can use for this. It's not on the slide, but I'm going to teach you it right now. Uh, will you work with me and wake us up as well? So it's five words. So it starts with questions. Will you all say questions? Questions. So great questions gives you great conversations. What does it give you? Great, great conversations. So great questions gives you great conversations. You can't have a great conversation without a great question. All of the best conversations in the world start with a great question. So when we're networking, great questions gives you great conversations, and great conversations gives you great relationships. What's it give you? Relationships. So let's see what you know. Great questions. Gives you great conversations. Gives you great relationships. Okay, start again. Come on, be, be together with me. We can do this. It's only five words. Great questions gives you great conversations. Gives you great relationships. Excellent. Great relationships gives you great opportunities. No one's going to create an opportunity without first having a relationship. Is that fair? No one's going to ring you up and say, hey, you don't know me, I've never heard of you, nobody's told me about you, you're a complete stranger, but I want what you do, and I've got $50 million, and I'm paying cash, can we start now? <laughs> so it's, your opportunities are going to come from a relationship, and relationships are going to come from great... Conversations. backwards now, and conversations come from great... Questions. So you see how it's building up, so let's start from the beginning, great... Gives you great... Gives you great... Gives you great... And opportunities gives you great... That's why you're in this. Nobody's here because you want more friends. You want to open doors and create business opportunities and, and make money. My definition of networking is attending business related events and online as well to fulfill your commercial objectives. That's putting money on the table, money in the bank, bringing in new business. So, great. Which gives you great, which gives you great, which gives you great, which gives you great. You wonder why the business isn't coming in, what opportunities are you creating? And if your pipeline's weak and you're not creating enough opportunities, how many relationships have you got? And if you're thinking your relationships are weak or you haven't got enough of them, you're not having enough conversations. And if you're not having enough conversations, you're probably not asking enough questions. 95% of my approaches to people on LinkedIn start with a question. Hey, good to meet you. I see we're both Nottingham based. How's things going at the moment? Questions start conversations. So connection. This is the work in the room stuff. Or making the call. Or reaching out online. You're now connecting with them. You've calibrated your network. You know your contribution. You're reaching out. Also on this is asking great questions. One of my favourite networking <coughs> questions is, so what's the biggest thing you're working on right now? I don't even ask people, what do you do these days? I say, so, what are you working on these days? People will tell you about the big project, the big passion, the big plan. And you'll see their eyes light up. And when people talk about projects and plans and problems, that creates opportunities for you. Repeat this after me, money follows pain. Money Wherever there's pain, folks, there's money. Money for you. Because it gives you an opportunity. Money follows pain. Money follows problems. Money follows plans. Money follows projects. So when you say to people, what are you working on right now? They will tell you their pain, their problems, their projects. And that creates opportunities for you to help, advise, sell to, introduce to. You don't ask these killer questions. You've got no chance. There are about 50 of them. Get them in your bank. Get a bit of education. Talk to me about some coaching or some of my books. Or ask some of the other great networkers out there. Ask people, what's your favourite networking question? And you'll start to build up a bank of them. Don't go into a networking scenario not having four or five really great questions to ask people that will create an opening. Yeah. And finally, don't just think about selling, think about serving. How can you help people? Sometimes you can help people by buying from them. Sometimes you can help them by introducing people to them. So that's connection. And finally, continuity. You've got to follow up. My problem when I was working at Brewery is I'd get a bunch of business cards, take them back to my office, I'd pull them on the desk and say, right, where was I? You ever done that? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. 
So seven people have done that. <laughs> the rest of you are liars. We've all done that. Big problem. So in continuity, you've got to follow up, you've got to follow through. Strategically, who are you following up with and how are you doing it? You've got to keep in touch because they'll probably need what you do in six months or 12 months. So how are you going to be front of mind then? Right now, you're the right idea at the wrong time. So you've got to find meaningful ways to keep in touch. It's not just a newsletter. There are lots of things you can do. You can invite people to events. You can introduce people to them. You can send them some relevant stuff. You can check in with them and ask how things are going and, and ask them some good questions. You can connect to them on social media. There's lots of ways to keep in touch. And finally, you've got to leverage the contact. Nobody makes any money from networking until somebody buys. So you want two things really from your networking contacts. One is you want people to buy from you, and the other is you want people to introduce you to someone else. Now there are a few other things like advice and support and help, but really, this is about getting business or getting introductions to business, and that's leveraging the contact. Asking people who they know, asking where their network is strong, asking who they might introduce you to, telling them what you're looking for and how they can help you. They're the five steps to building a great network. I'm going to share with you now just to finish off why men are lousy networkers. Because these are things that men have said. We really ought to be women fellas when we network. I was on an ITV documentary a couple of years back. And the title of the documentary was Live TV. I filmed it down in Birmingham. Who's more equipped for business in the 21st century, men or women? And I was arguing for women. And the person on the panel, there was two men and two women, that was arguing for men was John McCreerick. <laughs> Do you know who he is? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Big Channel 4 racing guy with the, with the sideburns and the, all the actions and everything. He's probably been here a few times. What a chauvinist. In the middle of my speech about how women build relationships by consensus and they look for collaboration and they're very empathetic, he said, what a load of tosh. <laughs> men are in charge. I'm the captain in my house. My father was the captain in his house. I've never made a cup of tea in my life. That's the woman's job. And you can feel the women on the panel bristling and wanting to punch the lights out. Anyway, men don't do themselves any favors. This is the kind of thing men say. This is why some men shouldn't be let loose. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies to any Scottish people in the audience. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a late laugh there. <laughs> you just done the maths. I used to be a maths teacher, I can help you with that. <laughs> you notice there's a lot of footballers in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised that you guys knows the word dispute book, but yeah. there you go. about done. Uh, we've taken uh, 40 minutes and uh, we're giving you a little bit of time to network now. It's time for action though. Yeah, we've had some fun. Yeah, we've learned some stuff. I'm going to recap it for you right now. I don't know what the missing piece of the puzzle is for you, but you're all in here because you want more business. You're all in here because your pipeline's not strong enough. You're all in here because you want to create more partnerships and more referral partners and, and better pipelines. You want to create more opportunities. Let's just recap where those opportunities come from. Great. Gives you 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 great. You great. You great. You great. You great. Come on. That's the missing piece, isn't it? Gotta be. So those five levels again, five steps. Contribution. Figure out what you're about. What's your message? Is it distinctive? Is it pass onable? Is it consistent? How do you answer the question, what do you do? 
Yeah. How do you answer when people say, how's business? Do you give them little stories and examples of the great stuff that you're doing? What's the best <coughs> thing you did recently for a customer or a client? I'd love to know that. So that's contribution. Then you've got to calibrate. You've got to say, right, this is what I'm about. This is why I'm good. This is why I'm worthy and valuable. Now who do I want to meet? Where are the gaps in my network? Where's my network strong? Do I want more of that or am I changing it? Do I want it locally, regionally, nationally? What's my niche? How can I best explain to somebody like Rob how they can introduce me to a few people in their network? That's calibration. Oops. Next thing is campaign. So now you're thinking, how can I reach them? Do they go networking? If not, I might need to get to them offline or I might need to go, through them, go to them through somebody else. One of my clients, uh, coaching clients, runs a investment organization, investment fitness. And he's looking for high net worth individuals with 500,000 pounds or more to spend. He found a cracking niche just recently. There are people called financial deputies. I don't know if you know this, but you know if you've been through a medical negligence share claim and you've had a big financial payout? Financial deputies are there to administer that process and make sure that you spend the money in the right way and you have the right advice and everything else. I guess it might be similar to if you win the lottery and people advise you on what to do with it. My investment fitness guy met a financial deputy networking and realized that he's got a whole vein of high net worth individuals there that he can build a relationship with and add value to. Classic example of how to get to the right people and what kind of people might help you. Then we've got connection. So you've got your campaign, you're out there, you're building your reputation, you're building your network, you've got one of the six strategies, or maybe two, it's online, it's monthly events, it's stuff like this, the exhibitions. Now we've got to make the connection, you've got to work the room, you've got to have the network and dialogue, you've got to ask the questions, you've got to have the conversation, build the relationship, tell them some stories, share some examples, find out where their pain, problems, projects or plans are, because money follows Pain. pain. You don't create pain. You don't create an itch that needs scratching. You can't help me. And finally, once you've made the connection, had the conversation, you've got to keep in touch. You've got to sustain the relationship. It's like a seed in the ground. You've got to water it, give it a bit of love, a bit of sun, a bit of nutrients. Stay relevant, stay valuable, stay worthy. Use email marketing or text marketing or whatever it is you're doing, but stay in contact. I saw two guys in a Dublin airport once. The plane was delayed for an hour. One guy read the paper for an hour. Another guy made 20 phone calls in one hour. And as far as I could tell, most of them were to voicemail. But it was like he wanted voicemail. <coughs> He'd call up and say, hey Joe, it's Bob here. I'm just stuck in the airport in Dublin, but you popped into my head. Uh, it's been a while since we're caught up. Look forward to catching up with you again. Hope Jim's okay. I'll chat to you soon. It's a nothing call, but it's a little 30 second lifter, just staying on someone's radar. How good are you at that? You've got to keep in touch. Uh, folks, just a reminder, if you want a copy of these key slides, a PDF copy so that you can get the stuff that's written on them, an audio copy of this talk as well, I'm happy to share that with you. I'll give you this little book as well. It's about 10 pages of A4. Loads of great tips on following up and keeping in touch with people. All you need to do is connect to me on LinkedIn. Just look at Rob Brown and do me a LinkedIn recommendation. That's all I, I'm asking for. Seems like a value for value exchange. Seems fair. You know what? Here's the crazy thing. There's, there's 100 people in this room. Eight of you will do that. Eight of you will do that. Isn't that crazy? And all of you right now are thinking, I'm in that eight. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you, you don't take action. You don't follow through on your promises to yourself. You'll go out here and you'll get wrapped up in the day today and your inbox will be full tomorrow when you go back because it's all crazy. And you'll be following your leads from today and everything else, which is great. But if you don't put that on your list mentally or physically, you will forget. And it's a nothing thing. It'll take you two or three minutes. You've got to connect to me and think about how this has helped you and write it down and get access to my network apart from anything else. But most of you won't do it. Now, it makes no difference to me whether you do it or not. It might make a big difference to you because I'm trying to get you into that, that habit of, of taking some action, of making something happen. Because doing something is always better than doing 
Nothing. I'd also say to you as well, get some education. David, you've been mentoring for years, haven't you? What's the importance of a good coach or a good mentor? Good listening. Good listening. Fantastic. Get around some good people. Your income will be the average of the ten closest people to you. Who's speaking into your life with any relevance? Who's coaching or mentoring or helping you? What books are you reading? Because what got you here won't get you there. The network you've got right now is not good enough to get you where you want to be. It's got you here, but you need a higher level network. You need higher level connections to get to where you want to be. Starts today. There are some amazing people in this room. If you don't get around them, start building a relationship with them. Get some good people speaking into your life. Some good advisors, suppliers, providers, professionals. Martin Rutter, American guy, said you've got to do it by yourself, but you can't do it alone. You've got to do it by yourself, but you can't do it alone. Our time is up. I really want to thank you for listening. Uh, I've given you a little bit of time, a lot of time now, to, to go out and do some networking. Make this time count. Don't count your conversations, but make your conversations count. Let's finish with our last little mantra. Great. Questions. 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 <laughs> I want this really loud for the recording, otherwise people will think there were four people in the room. So great. Questions. Is it great? Conversations. Is it great? Relationships. Is it great? Opportunities. Is it great? Business. Yeah. There was more at the beginning than the end, I'm sure. There's only five words, but that's your networking in a nutshell. If you really want to make it count, Follow that process, and I promise you, lots of business comes out the other end. You've been fabulous. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, stick around for round one. Thank you. Come back here as well, please. Can see Brett? He's got a brilliant talk on how to be an amazing communicator and really connect with people, and it's going to fit really well with what I'm doing too. You're going to be so confident coming out of that one. But God, make it count. I'm going to get lost. Get lost, get back to those stands, go walk in the floor, go shake some hands, go turn some strangers into friends. I'll see you when we